Good evening, Quintus Curtius here, and I just wanted to get a quick podcast out. It's uh, it's, uh, January 20th here, uh, 2022, and the title of this podcast is going to be uh, What is Important and What is Not Important, because, you know, one of the things that you just see over and over again in so many different manifestations and permutations is this inability that people have to distinguish between what is important, between what matters and what does not matter. And focusing on things that don't matter can really doom you. They can really lead you to ruin. And there are different reasons for this focus on things that don't matter, on tangential, on irrelevancies, tangential issues. Some of it's inexperience, some of it's arrogance, some of it's just youthful channeled energies in the wrong directions it can be for a variety of reasons but I think this is one of those principles that's best illustrated with examples and I was just thinking I was just on Twitter here just a few minutes ago and just putzing around with um, the gang on Twitter and uh, I just thought of a couple things from uh, Julius Caesar's military campaigns, just things that I thought that kind of leaped out in my mind. And this was one principle. Caesar, I remember Caesar often encouraged his men to have their weapons richly ornamented and decorated. He encouraged them to do this. Uh, He encouraged them to have them carved, richly decorated in gold and silver. Um not only for the sake of the appearance, uh, but for a very shrewd, very canny reason. He thought that by doing that, that he would encourage his men to value their weapons more than they already did. He wanted to cultivate pride of ownership. He wanted to cultivate a culture of beauty with weapons because he thought that by doing that, he would make his men value them that much more and that they would be more likely to hold on to them and use them. And I thought that was a very shrewd and, and clever strategy to, to or a very, very shrewd and clever policy. I mean, so many things that Caesar did as a general were just very, very, had a, they just showed a real grasp of human nature that, um, that we just don't find in, in many military commanders, ancient or modern. So that was one thing. It was a subtle way, a very just like so many things he did. It was subtle. It had it had a surface appearance of superficiality, but on further inspection, we find that it had a very very profound purpose. This was something that looked superficial, looked frivolous, but it actually represented a very dearly held principle to him, which is that his men should value what mattered. It's that they should place importance in what mattered. That was his. That was his, the pretext of his his order to to decorate the weapons. He wanted to make his men value what mattered. And conversely, he understood that if an enemy places his values on things that don't matter, then those that can also be exploited. That can be exploited. You can exploit your opponent's weaknesses, and in this case, the weakness being the enemy's focus on things that are irrelevant to effectiveness, to martial effectiveness. And there's a very, very good example of this. And this is something that we we saw manifest in the the battle between Caesar and Pompey uh, during the Battle of um, Pharsalia, during the, um, the Civil War, when he was reaching his climactic confrontation with his uh, nemesis Pompey, Pompey the Great. And Caesar knew during that battle that there were men in Pompey's army that were, oh, let's just say they placed a little too much pride in their appearance. There were men in, in the ranks who just valued themselves a little bit too much. They, they were very proud of their bodies. They, they uh, probably were from maybe the upper classes and they, um, you know, uh, placed a little bit too much emphasis on their, their, their bodies. And um, so what Caesar ordered his, his own men to do was to aim their spears 
and javelins at the bodies of his uh, enemies, at the bodies of these young men. Um, well, actually, primarily at their faces. So what he, what he told his men to do was to just go after their faces, disfigure their faces, attack that which is most important to them. He knew that they were vain. He knew that these young men were arrogant, were vain, and that they valued their appearances above all. So he used this dread of disfigurement that his enemies had against them. That's what he did. He, he understood what their weaknesses, he understood what the, the, uh, the weaknesses of these young men uh, were, that is, their vanity, their pride, and their facial appearance, and he, he ordered his own men to attack that. And that wasn't the only reason, of course, that he won the battle, but that was just one of his many stratagems. And this illustrates a very good principle that ties into what we're talking about, which is focusing, when you observe an opponent focusing on something that is irrelevant, in this case, facial appearance in battle, then you can use that to your advantage. You can use things that your opponent, uh, his squanderings away in frivolity, you can use that to your advantage. So again, this is the, we have, this, we have this, this tension between these two things, focusing on what is important and ignoring what is not important. And these, these two things need to be kept in mind. Caesar, with his order about, uh, to his men about decorating their weapons, that was an example of focusing on things that are uh, important because nothing is more important in a battle than weapons. And Pompey, allowing his men to um, pursue their vanities at the expense of their martial effectiveness. That's an example of focusing on unimportant things. But I mean, you just see this in just so many, you just see so many different illustrations of this. I was talking to someone the other day and we were talking about hand guards on the AR-15, the uh, rifle, the AR-15 rifle. And um, I was some. I think I, I was talking to him about. You know, I've got these Magpul uh, hand guards, and I was explaining how you know these things uh, can be tough to take off. They're a pain in the ass. It takes practice to get them on and off quickly. And the guy I was talking to, the friend of mine, he was saying, "Well, why would you ever take them off? You know, what's that? It doesn't matter. What you know, you should never have to take them off." Of course, this was a guy who's never been in the military before. And to me, that was just inconceivable. I mean, when you when you clean a weapon, you've got to strip it down. You've got to you got to take the hand guards off. You clean the weapon. You got to clean it. You don't just allow dirt and dust to just cake in in, in weapons. And yeah, of course, there's always and you know the the he, you know you're always going to get the answers. I always get the answers. Oh, well, it doesn't matter. The weapon will still fire. You can clean them for. And and you know you, you say to yourself, no 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 wrong answer. Wrong answer. It doesn't matter. You always keep your weapon clean. It doesn't matter whether you need to or not, or whether you can let it go for a week without. No, no, you don't. That's unthinkable. You know, your weapon should always be as clean as it possibly can be, because you have to realize how important that is. That's your lifeline. That is. That's. There's nothing. You know, weapon is sacred. Weapon is sacred. So anyway, this is not that. Um, long of a podcast, but it, I'm trying to just point out a, um, this, this idea of focusing on what matters and, and, and uh, discarding what does not matter. And, you, you know, there's just so many guys that just, I think, lose track of this. They, they spend their energies in these irrelevant eddies and, and side pools of the river, and they miss the flow of the current. They don't know where the river is headed, and they get kind of trapped in these little side pools. And they whirl around in circles in these little eddies by the side of, of the river. And they go nowhere. So keep that in mind. Take that under advisement. All right, that's enough for now. Short podcast, Quintus Curtius, and we will be back soon.